ladies and gentlemen, Nicholas Negroponte. Thank you very much. It's a real honor to introduce Megan, and let me tell you why. There's several reasons. First of all, when I went to MIT, and I've been there my whole life, it was 1961. I arrived as a student, and there were three women in my class of 1,000. This year, we ran a faculty search, because I tend to do that at MIT. We had 230 applicants, and of the top seven, five were women. We're still choosing. These numbers are very fresh. And I believe our admissions this year, if it was not 50-50, it was very close. Now, it turns out that after I graduated, I actually didn't leave. I stayed and joined the faculty and did research for about 15 years. And I met a remarkable man, and you'll see why this connects to Megan, who was the president of MIT. His name was Jerome Wiesner. But perhaps more importantly, he was Jack Kennedy's science advisor and ran a small office in the White House, which was about technology and advising the presidents on sort of going to the moon and doing things like that. And Jerry Wiesner had a love for media. And we started together the Media Lab. And the idea of the Media Lab, which is why, again, this award is so important to me, is that the inventors of new technology would, in fact, be the creative users. That's very important. In some sense, photography was like that. Photography was invented by photographers. But television was not. Television was invented by engineers and thrown over the fence. Computers, I felt then, 30 years ago, would be invented by the creative users as we moved forward. And when we opened the Media Lab, this is in 1985, one of the first students to cross the threshold was Megan. And she arrived, and you know, we have all sorts of great words for people. Megan is crazy. <laughs> and I think that's the biggest compliment I can give anybody. She went through, and I've known her for the whole 30-year period. We see each other every year and all the things she did. Apple and her startup company, where, by the way, I lost money. Um, and in the Google life that she's led. And she has an attention span that is tiny, but one of the reasons that's good is she has a patentable idea every 20 minutes. You can almost not get a word in edgewise, because as you're finishing your sentence, she's actually finished it and gone on to the next topic. So Megan is a real live wire. And I cannot tell you how much I learned from her over the years, especially in her not current role, but previous role at Google and Google X. And when she joined the White House, I thought, wow, Jerry Wiesner would be really proud because she's in that same office 40 years later. Megan, you deserve this enormously. Wow. Thank you, Nicholas. All right, Martha, I love the drone. We have drunk federal employees flying drones onto the White House lawn. <laughs> but I do, um, I believe in the Jetson future that we will have. And, you know, getting from here to there will be full of innovation, brilliance, but also a lot of complex policy and making sure we're taking care of people and keeping safety. And it's in that nexus that, that my role in the CTO job is really what is the technology policy that we, from my seat and also the President's science advisor, Dr. Holdren, uh, can bring with the technical people who are in government. We also are working on the beginning, you know, I got to work with Nicholas and others on the beginning of the internet 
It really is the beginning of digital government. And as I see my colleagues, we call it TQ, you know, like IQ and EQ. How do we get more TQ into the government? And, you know, the president experienced an amazing policy, you know, that, that with healthcare that was brilliantly architected, the economics, the, the business plan of it, the strategy, the care and the love that it would have for the American people, but a website almost tanked it, right? We can't have that. We're the country that makes Amazon and Facebook and Twitter and all these brilliant things. We need those Americans in government just like our top economists um, and legislators and others. And uh, what's exciting is the president is collecting us. Uh, we're, he's pulling us from all corners, a lot of Silicon Valley folks, and it's really beginning, and I think we'll see a transformation. We're already starting uh, in digital government and the websites and the experience of the American people where we become much more user-centric and kind to the Amer amazing American people and what they deserve, a government uh, that, is, that the people deserve. The area I've been really focused on has to do with something I call Innovation Nation. Uh, it's a collection of projects like Tech Hire, and for myself, I was lucky to be in environments that Nicholas created. And so many students are not in those positions. This place where you can come into an environment and it's not like tech is taught in a boring way. You know, people throwing facts at you and making you feel dumb. And if you don't get it, you know, you get bad grades and, and you feel bad about yourself. But really a hopeful place where you get to discover and do active learning um, is the kind of place that Nicholas created. He has a class there from someone he attracted where you get to learn how to make almost anything. And I think that that delight and love of tech is something that we need to use. I brought up, um, this is a Raspberry Pi and this is an Arduino. You know, people don't usually have circuit boards at this event. <laughs> I brought it because this is what's inside your cell phone. And I, I had the honor to go to First Robotics Nationals on Friday. It's the Friday Night Lights of STEM, 20,000 kids. <laughs> in a March Madness robot moment from kindergarten to first to, to 12th grade, three on three robot competition at the high school level, amazing. 20 minutes drive from that event in St. Louis, Missouri is Ferguson. So we got in a car and we went to Ferguson on Friday and sat down with their small robot team. And uh, I had this board and we were talking about all the different parts and how Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak had the homebrew computing club and they had a board, it was a little bigger, but that turned into Apple Computer. And that if these kids could come to understand and play with and love and understand the depth of this stuff, that they could be part of making things like this and making their future and be part of that whole technical conversation that we get to part of, that active learning. And that's why we're there with them. What I love was that... Uh,